1619, there was no such thing. Y'all be clear on this. There was no such thing basically as racism. Racism didn't exist before black slavery started. You had conflicts between ethnic groups. You had conflicts between uh, religious groups. Those were, and you had cultural disagreements. But you never had racism until, until black enslavement started. Racism is a word that means race. It means group. I don't want you to let people keep telling you that black people can be racist. You cannot be racist. The word does not exist for you. Racism means group-based. Racism means a power relationship. A power relationship between two groups where one group owns and controls so much that they can use their wealth and their power to deprive and hurt and injure another group. That's what racism is. And no place can you find a black person on earth that can be a racist. Only thing you can get at best is a black reactionary. That means a black person who's reacting to white racism. And I want people to quit calling Farrakhan a racist. Farrakhan is not a racist. What Farrakhan is doing is reacting to white racism. If black folk had been racist, they'd have been racist 400 years ago. They would have stopped people from depriving and hurting and castrating and lynching and exploiting them 400 years ago. That's why if you go back through history, you cannot find one single solitary instance any place in history on this earth where black folk have had enough power and wealth to come together to do injury to another group and take something from them. In the United States, you've never seen any blacks come together as an organization, as a group, to hurt any other group. Blacks have never done anything to Jews or to whites or anybody else, Asians or Hispanics, as a group. We can't practice racism. We don't even have a community to practice racism. But on the other hand, I can go through history books and I can show you mountains, thousands, maybe millions of instances where everybody else have done things mean to us, to deprive and hurt us by social customs, by le extra legal and legal means, by laws to do in black folk. You can't be a racist unless you got power and wealth for your group to be able to hurt other people and take and do them in, and we don't have it. So all we are are reactions to white racism. And so in 1619, when they started bringing blacks into this country, they brought blacks in this country for the very specific reason, initially, as indentured servants. They were sold off a Dutch ship for water and supplies. Blacks did reasonably well in the United States between 1619 and 1920, about 1924, 1925, in that general time frame. They served out their indentureship. Between 1926, between 1626 and 1638, they began to intermingle with whites. Some of them intermarried, interbred. In 1638, the founding stone for racism in America was laid. The state of Maryland, the state of Maryland put out the first public edict that started racism for blacks in America. They put out an edict, a public policy that called the Doctrine of Exclusion. The Doctrine of Exclusion says that black people should never be permitted to enjoy the fruits of white society. That became the doctrine of racism in America in 1638. Now, that was called a doctrine of exclusion. That meant every time you get a chance, exclude black folk out of it. I don't care what it is, exclude them out. Whether it's out of, nowadays, out of welfare, food, whatever it is, exclude them out. Business, anything you can do. Now, that went on from 1638 to 1666, 1665 and more specifically. In 1665, something happened. Because during that period, they were trying to find a way to build the United States. And the European colonial powers were saying, I sent you whites to America to build America, to, to use the land, to bring resources, to find gold and silver and products back to Europe. And the colonial powers, contrary to what you read in the history books, they did not come here for religious freedom. They weren't fools. They could have gone any place in Europe and worshipped. There was nothing over woods and bushes and trees over there. They came here specifically to get wealth and resources and gold. And, they, and what they kept telling the European colonial powers was that we can't do anything with America because we don't have a labor force. 
And somebody said, yes, we do have a labor force. So you remember that group back in 1638 that Maryland shut out under the doctrine of exclusion? That's our labor force. So at that point in time, what they did then, they passed what were called enslavement laws. They passed enslavement laws and they took the doctrine of exclusion and expanded it. So that not only did the doctrine of blacks to be excluded, but now blacks were to be excluded, subordinated, non-compensated, non-competitive work group, a labor force for the personal comfort and wealth building of white society. That was what the slave code said explicitly and implicitly. That's been the problem that you've had now for 400 years. It decided how you were to be treated. At that slave, those slave codes again, and remember this on anything that goes on in Los Angeles, you can tell when your policy and effects that blacks will be excluded, subordinated, non-compensated, non-competitive, managed workforce for the personal comfort and wealth building of white society. That stayed in effect until about 1705. 1705, the slave codes were passed. Very important. What the slave codes did was to tell everybody, whites on one side and blacks on one side, how you were to treat black folk and how whites were to behave towards each other. It says that every white person must accept how black folk were to be treated. They must accept the public policy. And that every white institution, every white church, every white business, every white school, every white level of government, and every white individual must treat black folk in an exp exploited, subordinated, excluded manner. Any white person who deviated from that, he could be hurt and injured and lynched. You, even whites could not deviate from that policy. And black, you could not, no white person could raise a black folk person up to make him equal to a white person. And on the other side of the slave code, they told how blacks were to be treated. Blacks were not to be permitted to be equated to whites in any respect. A white person could not enter a room without a white, without a white person's permission. A black person could not enter a group carrying a conversation without permission. He could not carry a weapon, a tool. He could not raise himself, could not raise his hand to defend himself. He could not strike a white person. He could not be called out after dark on certain times, carrying a weapon. And he couldn't even look out, in some cases, he couldn't even look out the same window the whites looked out of. That was a subordination. He could never be put in a position of power and authority. Now, those were what the slave codes did. And also the slave codes put out, they put attached to that what's called the Diversity Act of 1705. It says to make sure this thing works. Every time you get six black folk together, make sure there's one white person included. That was to always monitor black folk to make sure they never did any planning. That he never did anything that, was, that, that, that could be injurious to them.